It's six hours for exile, that is. That's stressful. I'm about to turn my fucking thingy off. I'm about to have to turn me for a football off. Both of Is he still at KFC or what? Is he still at KFC? <laughs> Right, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Good evening. I can't even concentrate because Tasha's just sat behind me being a cunt, so I might as well just cancel this because she's being a prick. Um, welcome to episode number two of Ben Teggy Fried Chicken uh, Fantasy Football um, stream that we're going to do on a weekly basis. So last week, obviously, we did episode number one, uh, which personally I think bet went better than expected. 
Um, hence episode number two being up right now. Um, we are expecting Needy Peck to be here with us, but there's no sign of him um, at this stage, so we're going to have to slightly adjust our agenda. Um, but obviously the season's kicked off tonight. I think, I haven't had a look in the last hour or so, but um, this morning we had uh, 93 teams registered for Ben Teki Fried Chicken um, League Ahead. Um, and I think then since we've had about 20, 25 um, additional teams sign up. So we've uh, definitely smashed the 100 mile, which is uh, it's great to see. Love to see it. So thank you everyone that's taken the time to um, sort a team out and whatnot. Uh, obviously the season's kicked off tonight. Um, we've just been watching Palace against Arsenal um, at Sellers Park. Um, at half time, Arsenal lead 1-0 through Martin Alligol. Um, and pretty much dominated the uh, the first half there. Have you been watching that um, as well, Lewis? Yeah, it's been been interesting. Yeah. Are you? Um, have you got any of the Arsenal players in your um, your fantasy lineup? I think I've got Odegaard. I think uh, no, Martin Martin and Jesus. I think. So you've got the goal scorer then, the opening goal scorer. Oh. Mm, so you'll be. Um, well on your way there with the points to start with. Um, I this morning I only had Saka um, in the team when I got to work, um, but then me and my team we spent about two hours this morning just uh, with the guys at work adjusting the team and whatnot. Um, and from I'm playing a three-five-two, and from my front seven, I think I changed five um, of the front seven. Um, ended up bringing in Odegaard. Um, and I think I've, I've already had Jesus in there as well. So I think I've got three of the um, Arsenal players in there at the moment. Okay, so uh, so far there is just obviously myself and um, Lewis in the party at this moment in time. We were expecting uh, Needy Peck to be on, uh, but he hasn't turned up as yet. Um, and we were expecting um, one of the lads from work to be on Siage as well, but um, he's not turned up either. So... Um, We'll give you what we can uh, for the time being. So, uh, just on the stream, uh, VBRL Reese thirty one opinions on my fantasy team. So, um, I'm not. I don't think I can see other people's teams as yet. Reese um, might be able to in the last half an hour or so. But um, prior to submissions closing at half six, I, even as the admin of the league, I couldn't see other people's teams. Um, so I'll just have a quick look now and see if it is possible to view other people's teams no it's not so still I can't view other people's teams so Reese, if you want to uh, if you want to tell us your team by all means you can do and um, we'll pass comment on it as we as we go through the show but um, we're just going to change slide briefly one moment here as we move through the agenda uh, so obviously we've got Palace and Arsenal, which is live. Have you still got the game on in the background, Lewis? Not anymore, no. Not anymore. Okay, that's fine. So I haven't got it on either. So we'll we'll look at that every 10 minutes or so. So just moving on to what we dad now as the next agenda topic. So I've titled this um, in our notes as a sticky situation for the Toffees. So obviously Everton, uh, known as the Toffees, <coughs> um, struggled last year under Lampard. Um, I've had a pretty torrid summer. Um, <laughs> uh, they've lost. Obviously, Richarlison's gone. He's gone to Tottenham. Um, and this oh, morning, oh hello, Needy Pack, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm not being funny, mate. But if this was a race, the pit gate would have been closed eight minutes ago, and you'd have missed the fucking start. You'd have missed the race. Like, what time do you call this? Pardon? Exactly. <laughs> you were at KFC earlier, not long ago. Oh, so Have you managed to finish your KFC? I've managed to finish my KFC. I've done a bit of breakfast. A bit of breakfast? Yeah. A teammate. Is that for BWB? It was, yeah. How did you get on? We won 5 1. You won 5 1, who was that against? <laughs> you don't even know who you're playing against. What colour were they in? Black. Black, right, okay. Fair enough. Right, anyway, so, um, obviously you weren't here uh, up until a minute ago, Needy Peck, so we have 
um, moved over the specific agenda point that we had for yourself. So we'll come back to it after uh, we talk about Everton's sticky situation. Okay. Uh, so in terms of Everton, um, they were pretty poor last season. Um, obviously, I think they managed to stay up with a, a game or two left to go. Um, under Lampard last season, um, they've sold Richarlison, who's gone on to Tottenham. Um, obviously, then that leaves them a um, little light up front with uh, Luca Dina and Dominic Calvert Lewin. Now, Calvert Lewin this morning has been confirmed that I think he's out for six weeks. Uh, so they're obviously going to be seeing a massive layer. I think they're in financial crisis as well. So they've brought in James Tarkovsky from Burnley, who got relegated, um, and then. The back end of this week as well, they've also spent £20 million on a winger, Dwight McNeil. Um, they've played also for Burnley last year, 38 games, um, had one assist and scored no goals at all. Um, so, Lewis, we'll come over to you first of all. Um, how do you see Everton um, faring up in this coming season? Well, after last season, I don't see them lasting much longer, especially with Lampard being there and like you said about the oh, they made, yeah. they're not really big signings what you call in the Prem and also you've got like the loss of Richardson and like you said I just don't think they're going to have any firepower at all Mm -hmm, absolutely, Nida Peck. What's your thoughts on? Um, we'll we'll obviously. I mean, we'll come on to the opposition at the moment. But uh, the team you follow, do you feel that your team is stronger than the current Everton um, lineup and squad? It's difficult to say, isn't it? Championship football is different league to Premier League, as we all know. But then, some Premier League teams can't play Championship football, so it's difficult. We've we've drafted a few players. They were ex Premier League players, well, ex some kind of a Premier League team, you know. So, I think they're probably level pegging, but then Everton had a kick up the arse, they nearly got relegated. I think it might spot the ride those up a bit, Lampard might change a few things. Yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, so a couple of people on the stream, Rosa, hello, um, Jacob, hello, thanks for the follow as well, and obviously Bob Tash in there as well. Oh, yeah! uh, good evening, welcome in, thank you for uh, dropping by. Okay, so, uh, yeah, for me, um, I think Everton are really, really going to struggle um, this season, um, along with another established team that we'll come on to shortly in one of the further agenda points. Um, but I think, yeah, from the three teams that have come up, I think they're, they're going to be looking at um, probably finishing above Everton um, potentially this season. But we'll see. Obviously, a long way to go. Uh, there's a lot of experienced heads in there, but... A lot of people that might not be interested in the fight, you know, and obviously that man on the screen, uh, you know, Deli Alley, where has he gone in the last three, four years? You know, obviously we've got a World Cup coming up around the corner. Um, is there any way at all that Deli Alley can be in the England squad for the World Cup, guys? Unless he pulls his finger out. Well, I think he lost it. He's not, it's not what he used to be here at Tottenham. Yeah. Yeah. He's he in his 30s now, isn't he? So he's not. He's not he's um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think he's probably late twenties. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I mean, obviously, like you mentioned, you know, a few years ago, um, he was. Yeah, just like he's twenty six. So yeah, he's, he's coming to retirement age now, isn't it, for a Premier League player? You know. <laughs> but then sometimes they're in their prime the last couple of years. So you, get to <clears throat> you think twenty six is retirement age? Of course it is, Premier League. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. So yeah, there's a few comments on the stream saying yeah they're going to struggle as well. Jacob agrees, agrees with that. But yeah, it's going to be a, a long old, uh, long old season. I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be tough for them uh, throughout this campaign. Okay, so uh, moving on. So we're going to move on to um, what we had down as one of our first agenda points tonight. Uh, and we've give it a cheeky little name as well. So Needy Peck, um, that you will have heard on the stream there, he is uh, and has been um, a oh, lifelong yeah. um, supporter of, of Bournemouth. Uh, goes to quite a lot of games um, with his kids as well. Um, so Needy Peck, obviously, we are going to pop your cherry today live on stream here right now. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, so Bournemouth back in the Premiership. How did you feel uh, towards the back end of last season? Tell us, tell us about. Nerve wracking at first because obviously uh, it was all touch and go. Um, obviously the Nottingham Forest game was cancelled due to those high winds. The stadium was damaged, so that was obviously the game um, that everyone wanted to go. Luckily, I had the tickets anyway because they got, they got cancelled, postponed, as it were. Um, and they had to win it just to get them into the Premier League and it was the whole game the nerves you know it was unbelievable um, the fans got right behind them but it was nerve wracking and I, was, I I must admit there's no other experience of that nervousness you know and when they scored unbelievable yeah ok so what was the score for that particular game 1-0 one, one one nil. Okay, so Dean Court, or Vit oh, Dean Court, as it is traditionally known, it's still the Vitality Stadium now, isn't it, down there on the south coast? Um, obviously, one of the uh, much smaller stadiums. Um, yeah, Eleven thousand capacity. Yeah, eleven thousand three hundred and seventy-nine, yeah. and um, you know, obviously playing Premiership football, which is unreal. Because um, my hometown team, the Share, we're in the conference, and our stadium holds over fourteen thousand. Um, so obviously, it's crazy, it's crazy. I think there's more like when you go to the bigger stadiums like Man United, Etihad, Man City, and all that. The away fans get like six, seven thousand tickets. You know, mm. that's over three quarters of our stadium. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, exactly. So it's obviously quite overwhelming, but I think it works both ways. You know, obviously the players at the top clubs that play for. You know the top six: United, City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, etc. They're obviously used to playing week in, week out in massive stadiums. So for them to go, you know, travel down South Coast, uh, playing a, a close, tight knit um, stadium where you know you can hear every comment, can't you, from the fans? Yeah, yeah. You can hear every single comment. It's just <coughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, be quite hard. It must feel the pitch must feel a lot smaller to them because the space around the outside, literally the crowd is right next to. Whereas, like, I think the big stadiums, you're good, I don't know, 20, 30 foot back from the pitch anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a good stadium. I say that it was voted or it won the best football pitch in the championship all season. All right. Yeah, the groundskeepers kept it top notch. And I must admit, when um, Bournemouth won against Nottingham Forest, I did invade the pitch <sighs> with my boy. Oh. Um, knee skids, and it was very good knee skidding grass. <laughs> <laughs> knee slides. How old are you? How old are you, Needy Peck? Really uh, late 30s and you're doing knee slides on the Vitality Stadium. Uh, yeah. If you do that next season, I believe you get criminal uh, record now. So, yeah, it's yeah. one of the... Uh, one of you, you do now, but I think there was thousands and thousands on the pitch. You know, you weren't going to stop us. Yeah, yeah. So Rosa says, PUSB up the city. I'm not sure what... What does PUSB stand for, um, Rust Harmony? Um, I know Rosa is a, is a Coventry City fan, so it's highly unlikely we'll be talking about the Sky Blues on this particular series. Okay, so uh, congratulations, Needy Peck, and obviously getting back into the Premiership. Um, how many seasons away was it? Was it just the one season away? No, no, it was um, two seasons, wasn't it? Right. The first season was in, during COVID. Oh, all right, yeah. Did, they didn't quite make the uh, playoffs today. Mm hmm. Uh, and then obviously they got Scott Parker in, didn't they? Yeah, Scotty uh, P. Yeah. Obviously, he was an ex Fulham manager, so mm -hmm. he had the potential. Sort of. To be fair, from the off, he had the right players behind him. Um, had a bit of a rocky season over sort of the Christmas period, over the sort of Christmas break. But yeah, yeah, come back strong. Mm -hmm. Just had to believe in the manager, as you do. Yeah, so the Cherries opened their campaign at home uh, to Aston Villa, obviously um, led by Stevie G. Um, Villa, we spoke about Villa last week. Uh, they've obviously signed Coutinho on a permanent deal now, uh, which is a massive thing for them. Um, I think a couple of... Go on, sorry. It's good for the manager as well, isn't it? He knows now he can get his head down, get his players in, he needs to play his players formation of football he wants to play yeah that's it I think that obviously all the new managers and younger managers need time don't they to um, to build their own team um, but I think this last few days I think Villa have lost a couple of younger players um, to um, I think is, is it 
Carney or and Chukamika that have moved on as well. Um, Chukamika, I think, has gone to um, to Chelsea for a. Um, I'm not sure what the what the figure was, but I know he's only about like 18, 19 years old. So, massive deal for him. Uh, so, in terms of Bournemouth, Needy Peck. Um, naturally they're going to be one of the favourites to go down um, who and how or who's going to keep them up and how are they going to stay up if at all possible well everyone thought that like the 2014, 15, like 16 you know they would go straight back down being a small club they proved it wrong I think their highest position throughout their Premier League campaign was ninth. Mm-hmm. Um so you know they can do it they're just unlucky their season they got relegated um, it's difficult Scott Parker, I think he's got the right players around him. We've got Dom Slanky up front. I don't think he's a, he's a Premier League player. Yep. Being being honest, but we have um, taken some signings on this summer already. We have just had the midfielder Marcus Tavener from Middlesbrough. Okay. So um, yep, yeah, he's strength in the, the middle there, and we've taken um, what is it? White right back Fredericks is it from? West Ham. Right, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Because obviously we've lost Nat Phillips back to Liverpool. Um, he was on loan for us last season and to be fair, he was outstanding. He really did strengthen the back four. Um, difficult to say who'd help win it, but you've got Lloyd Kelly, fantastic left back. Mm-hmm. And, um, you've got you've got the, the, the Billing and Slanky pairing, you know, they work yin and yang, you know. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they can get, get going, you know. And prove that they are Premiership worthy. Okay, fantastic. So Rosa on the stream says Fredericks is a great sign in uh, yeah. for you guys. Um, he's also put in a little chant here, so we'll sing it and we'll say he's Brazilian. He only cost a million, and we think he's fucking brilliant, Gustavo. Is, I'm guessing that's um, a Coventry player, is it, Gustavo? <coughs> and if Coventry addition out a million pounds for Brazilian footballers, then um, they've obviously got some great PR publicity going on there. Because I don't think I'd ever play for Coventry City. <laughs> okay, so um, moving on then to uh, what we have down as topic number four. And we've got a little slide here. And what you see there is Casper Schmeichel, um, 11 years at um, Leicester, club captain. Um, 78 clean sheets in 276 games. Um, and the little text we've put across that there is nice to see you, to see you nice. Um, obviously, a little play on words there. Casper's gone. He's left Leicester. He's gone to Nice in the south of France. So, a slight play on words there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, there's two reasons I'm shocked he's gone. One um, is obviously the player that he is and the stature that he has at the club. You know, he's he's, a, he's probably going to be um, a Leicester legend, isn't he? Um, initially, when Schmeichel came into professional football, everyone was just saying he's just living off his dad's history, obviously, Peter Schmeichel. Um, but I think um casper has led the line at leicester for a long long time now and has been number one and been a fantastic goalkeeper um now yeah i'm surprised he's gone on based on his stature but i'm also surprised he's gone two days before the start of the premier league season um now leicester's current keepers uh, one is Danny Ward that used to be at Liverpool and was obviously on loan at Huddersfield a few years ago um, and I'm not even sure who the the reserve keeper is there so they um, they're gonna be in a, a I think these are gonna struggle as well um, because not only has Casper gone um, ever uh, Newcastle of um, earlier in the week bid 40 million for James Madison that was turned down and um, they came back with a second offer of 50 million um, which I also believe has been turned down, um, and Leicester is saying they want about sixty million. Um, I think I think Newcastle will probably offer them that sixty million and, and take James Madison um, up into the. Don't forget with uh, Leicester when they had that money pumped in from the Asian businessman. Yeah. Pumped a lot of money in, didn't they? And they bought a lot of players under Ra- Claudio Ranieri, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but. To be fair, they haven't really signed many players since that big spend, have they? Really, they've taken a few on. We obviously, um, Vardy's still there, isn't he? I think. 
Uh, yep, Vardy is still there, but obviously you know, he's, he's mid thirties now, so injury prone and whatnot. But uh, but yeah, James Madison last season eighteen goals, James Madison, um, t- and twelve assists in all competitions, fifty three games. Obviously, Leicester played in Europe as well last season. So if he was to move on, that would be a massive. Um, chunk out of the the front line disappearing. Uh, there's also talks of uh, Wesley Fafana going to Chelsea. Now, I think that'll probably fall through because um, Chelsea have signed the the Brighton defender today. Is it, is it Cucurella? Um, I think I, I think Cucurella, you at yeah. Cucurella. Yeah, I think you had him in your team, didn't you, Lewis? Originally, did you did you keep him in? I don't. I, I think I got rid of him. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Changing formation last minute. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, there's talk of Harvey Barnes potentially moving on and also Yuri Tielemans, so uh, they could be in a bit of a pickle. Leicester haven't signed a single player as well this summer either, so... I think this season, the way they're going with losing players, it reminds me of the season is it after they won the league, when, um, like, was it eight or seven players left the club, and it was like, they had a transfer... Uh, after that, they earned, like, 257 million from selling players from, like... Mares and Kante and hmm. like, and that from then on they've never really been up there, have they? Mhm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's um, I think I think Leicester are gonna um, struggle. Um, this season, in comparison to recent, I don't think they'll be in a relegation fight. Um, but I do feel that um, they uh, they're probably gonna be bottom half. I would imagine this season. Uh, just a quick update on the Palace and Arsenal match. We're coming in at the 70th minute. He's still 1-0 to Arsenal. Um, so no change there since half-time. Uh, ben White's picked up a yellow in the 60th minute and Nathaniel Klein also in the 64th as well. So it sounds like Arsenal have that under control. But at 1-0, um, Arsenal looked a little bit uh, dodgy at the back in the first half on a few separate occasions as well. So we'll um, we'll keep an eye on that. So glad there's football back on the weekend, though. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I just, um, obviously it was only um, about an hour ago I said to the missus, I said, "Shall we, um, shall we upgrade the sky the sky package and get the sports included?" Because I think they were doing a promo about eighteen pound a month for it. There. Um, would you just say hi, Tasha? Then she's not. She's moved into the kitchen. A minute. Um, Siage, no, she's not. She's behind me again. Uh, Siage on the stream. I agree. Right, bottom half finish for Leicester. So Siage won on the stream here. Yeah. He was supposed to be in this panel tonight. Um, one of the lads from work. He had a lot to say on Wednesday. A lot of opinions, and they ain't got the balls to turn up and say it on the stream. Look, so uh, we'll sort that out. We'll sort that out for another time. Okay, so <coughs> on to the next topic. Um, we do. We will finish again, or we will have a um, a quiz again shortly. Um, it's slightly different tonight to how it was last week. It's going to be anagrams tonight. Um, but Rosa says, "Get me on the panel. I love to talk football." You're mental, Rosa. Rust harmony. If you've had a bag of skittles, mate, you're absolutely yeah. He's, yeah. He's on the blue smart, isn't he? yeah, but uh, we'll see. If we, if it's a quiet weekend, we might get you on, Rosa. But um, the next topic. So. This is a quite open one. Now, this question goes out to not only those in the panel tonight, um, but everybody that is watching on the stream. Uh, we are in double figures, which is a slight improvement on last week. So, obviously, if we keep this going, uh, hopefully we can get... Um, <laughs> hopefully we can continue to grow that. But, um, so we'll come to you first, Lewis. Um, as a fan of Liverpool Football Club, um, what's your prediction for the top four this coming season? Um, of course, you've got your City to win the league. You, know, you can't really say they're not going to win the league after the signings they've made this, this this summer. And you just can't say no, really. Mm-hmm. And then, second, I'm going to have to go Liverpool at that stage. Because like, the signing of Nunes and, and the team they've got still. I reckon they'll, they'll challenge for it, but they just won't have the edge at the end of the year, especially with like, um, like injuries and all that. Like. And then third, I've gone, I've gone Tottenham, especially with, like, but now they've got like Kurt Conte still there. They've got Perisic and um, they've got Curtis, can't say his name, 
could have Vesky and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, they only got like they brought Spence in from Nottingham Forest. I can can just see them challenging for second and like guaranteeing the Champions League spot. Mhm. Okay. And then fourth, I've gone. I've gone Chelsea, especially with their signing to the defence. But I don't see them go. I'm just, I can see them clinching fourth, just about, because I don't think they've got any fire firing power at the front. So they've got like they've only got Havertz and Mount really. Okay. But, yeah. <coughs> Do you think Sterling will add to the Chelsea firepower or? Um. If you play like you did the City, yeah, but because they haven't got an out and out striker like Werner, he's very miss 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 hit really normally. Mm -hmm. like, he can only put a ball in the back of the net, but it has to be like six yards out. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so just to recap then, so you're as a Liverpool fan, you're predicting City are going to win the league, Liverpool second, Tottenham Hotspur in third, and Chelsea fourth. Okay, interesting, interesting. There's uh, a few disagreements on the on the chat, which we love to see. Uh, Needy Peck, over to yourself then. So, what? How how do you see the top four um, shaping up this coming season? Right, just purely because they tried so hard. I think Liverpool win the league. They just missed out, didn't they? Signed obviously the new star striker Darwin up there with. Uh, Mo Salah, I think they're going to be a great pairing. So I'm going to put Liverpool first. Um, Man City second, because they're Man City. You know, they always top two, top three. Now third and fourth, it's a difficult one. But I think it's going to be Tottenham. Okay. Um, <coughs> and then Arsenal. I think Arteta's... In his third year now, is he? Second, third year. Third, yeah, third, yeah, I think, yep. I don't, I don't think Chelsea will be uh, sort of this. I think because they've signed some, spent some money, but I don't think he spent the right money in the right places. Let's say you've got Mount and that there, but yeah, so I think Liverpool, Man City. Oh. Uh, okay, just bear with me one moment. This what happens to you, Ben. I want to now. <laughs> We've got a red. Smith Dog's coming with a red. There's just about. Just hold on one minute, Nida. So there's a, a totally r new noise that's playing in my ear here for about 30 seconds. Um, it stopped now. Thank you. <laughs> I wondered what the hell was going on there because I have never heard that noise or notification before ever. Um, so thank you very much for the raid, Smith Dog. Um, one thing I do need to do tomorrow is change the um, <laughs> change the yeah, fucking they settings on that. Yeah. Yeah, so CR just said that Chelsea need a strike to finish top. Uh, Tottenham for third is a great shout, yeah. So thank you very much, Smith Dog, for obviously the raid and whatnot. So just recap quickly then, Needy, on your top four for us. Uh, Liverpool first, Man City, Tottenham and then Arsenal. Thank you very much. So, anybody else on the stream? What are we? Uh, it seems that everyone's divided here on the the championship winners, whether it be Liverpool or City. So, we've probably got a two horse race um, going forward, which I think we probably all agree on. And um, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that you've both put Tottenham third. Um, I didn't have Tottenham on that close, but um, who knows? Potentially, potentially. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I think um, I think Everton, uh, not Everton, Jesus, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal are obviously going to be in that mix as well. I think West Ham um, are going to go quite well as well, to be fair. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll see how Tottenham kick off uh, tomorrow at home to Southampton. Um, they need to get off to a good start, don't they? Harry Kane usually has a slow start, doesn't he, though? Um, Very slow start. Yeah. Gets into it. Gets slated to death. His heart's not on it. <clears throat> He's got done good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yep. bang, bang, bang. Goals keep coming. Yeah. World Cup, World Cup turns up, gets the golden boot, or he's like the fantastic 
Yeah, that's it. That's it. Summer after summer, there's talk about um, Kane wanting out, isn't there, and and whatnot. So, um, Rosers um, going with Liverpool first, Man City second, Chelsea third, and Spurs fourth. Um, Jacob, uh, Liverpool first, City second, Chelsea third, and United fourth. Wow, United fourth. Who's who's going to get the goals at United? Um, there's obviously talk of Ronaldo uh, potentially moving on. Um, Maguire on goals. Maguire on goals. Yeah. I th- I th- if Ronaldo's going to stay at Man United. It's all media blown out of proportion. If he really wanted to go, he would have gone by now, wouldn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah. He, he, he's not a lot of money. Yes, he's asking for high wages, but the transfer fee isn't a lot, really, is it? Mm-hmm. in Premier League money. Yep, that's true. That is true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Was it five mil to Chelsea? Five million. Is that all? I think that was it. But this, yeah, this is what, his age and his contract comes to a big factor of his his, uh, his transfer budget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Is this, this weekly wage that, that um, yeah like people can't afford, isn't it? Mhm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. So good, good honest debate there. So we're going to move on to um, our weekly quiz. Um, this week it is in the form of um, anagrams. So um, there is five anagrams. So you will need to be watching the stream, but I will obviously read out um, or I will say out um, the words. Now, these anagrams um, rearrange to football teams that have played in the Premiership. So they either they're either in the Premiership now, or they have been in the Premiership in recent years. So there is five. Um, obviously, if you're watching on the stream, um, please don't bother googling these or typing these into Google because it will probably come up with the answers. Um, there's no points, it's just a bit of fun. Um, you guys that are on the stream, if you want to potentially shout out the answer, that's more than welcome to do so. Um, anagram number one is Vital Loans. Vital Loans. So this is either an, ex- either an existing or a previous football club. So yeah, Needy Peck shouted it, Bob Tash just shouted it out. Um, Vital Loans is indeed Aston Villa, so well done, well done to those that got that. Villa, yeah, well done, well done. Uh, Okay, so (laughs) moving on to number two. Wet, dense, lunatic. Yeah. Wolverhampton Wanderers, says Needy Peck, there's no V in that. (laughs) It's just because it's a long name, isn't it? Bob Tash is shouting West Ham United. There is a yes, unless you just have a Am Sane. <laughs> yep, West. Yeah, it's not West Ham. Either an existing Premiership club or a previously have played in the Premiership. Wet, dense, lunatic. <coughs> I think this is potentially my uh, fantasy team name for next season, if I can remember. What was that? Oh, oh, got it, I got it. Uh, Newcastle United. Needy Pecks in there with Newcastle United, yep. It is the Magpies. He's got it. Well done, Needy Peck. Well done, Needy Peck. <laughs> okay, so moving on to number three. Are we ready for this? Daffy Critic. Daff- Daffy Critic. For number three. Short name. Um... Look at that! Look at Ben Teki there. He looks well happy with himself, doesn't he? Uh, ben 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 Teki fried chicken there. He looks proud as punch. Um, just quickly looking at the Palace and the Arsenal match. We're into the final ten minutes. It's still one nil. 
still 1-0 to Arsenal. Uh, Gabriel Martinelli with the only goal of the match. So either existing or previously played in the Premiership. Uh, a few guesses coming in from Jacob. He's gone Villa City, Forest Palace. Rosazona, Rosas got it. Cardiff City, yeah. So, so that was obviously the first one that currently isn't in the Premiership, um, and obviously uh, also not an English club as well. With you know Cardiff being in Wales. Uh, moving on to number four now, um, younger viewers. Um, you may need to seek parental advice from your parents before we reveal this oh, next one. Yeah, Rosa, Rosa, um, so please do forgive me. You know this is ex is this this is aimed at uh, an adult audience. So number four, clitoral chat. Then Clitor <laughs> clitoral <laughs> chat. Then I did not create these anagrams. I found them on a website on Google. Literal chat then. Um, in other news, Huddersfield are losing again. 2 1 to Birmingham. So that's Charlton two. Athletic. Bob Tash has got Charlton Athletics, so she's obviously Googled that one. Roz has got it in there as well. Go on, Championship Knowledge. Yeah, so Clitoral Chat then is indeed Charlton Athletic. How the fuck did you get that so quick? Mmm. Rob, take your phone off it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the fifth and final one uh, from tonight's quiz. In Hangover in Bloodbath. <laughs> in Hangover in Bloodbath. Hmm. <laughs> Need a peck's gone with Bournemouth. In Hangover in Bloodbath. I'm baffled, mate. <laughs> I think this is the most challenging out of the five. Brighton and Hove. There you go, Needy Peck's got it, Brighton and Hove Albion. It is indeed. It's the Seagulls yeah, on the south coast. Jacob's just got Brighton in as well. It is one of the one of the rivals for the cherries. Fantastic, good stuff, well done, great stuff. It's quite funny because um, obviously I'm a, a former supporter. My dad, a long life Southampton supporter. Is there really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since he was a kid, so yeah. We're going to hopefully get some tickets to go away to Southampton. It's easy to get tickets to go to Southampton and Bournemouth. Yeah. So the old man can go sit in the th Bournemouth side to watch Southampton play. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so um, one of the things that we have agreed on uh, throughout this series is that uh, we start the show without a title name. Um, and at the end of the show, it is 2-0 to Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal have just scored a second goal. Um, OG, actually. Gooey has scored an OG in the 85th minute, so that looks like the three points are going to the Emirates. Um, so yeah, well done to those taking part in the quiz. Um, one of the things that we have agreed on for the show is that we start the show as yet untitled, um, and at the end of the show we will agree on a title name for the stream, uh, something that we've talked about, something funny. Um, any things that come to mind from throughout that chat, guys, that you would potentially put forward as um, a, a stream name for this particular episode. The Rude Anagram. Bob Tash is coming with the Rude Anagram. Um, um, anybody else on the on the stream with any comments, any uh, particular talking points? Anagram, that hangover, sir. Not one of the names. Yeah, potentially, yeah. I'm not sure Clitoral Chat then would be accepted on YouTube. <laughs> Fantasy interviews, yeah, possibly, oh, possibly. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, if there's any uh, any Coventry is class as Rossa, <laughs> uh, I think we might look at potentially getting 
uh, yeah, commentary who says uh, says the Bournemouth fan. We might get Rosary next week. Uh, next week's stream will not be on Friday because um, I simply won't be here. I'll be in Wales next Friday. So, um, yeah, we're going. It's the Speedway Grand Prix on um, on the Saturday. So I've booked uh, booked as a, a holiday cottage um, for four nights. <laughs> so we're having a long, long weekend away. We've got the kids with us as well, unfortunately. Oh, but, no, um, but yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah, sees match day number one's well underway. Arsenal two 0 up with three minutes to go at Salas Park. Um, thank you very much to um, up the Chris Harris says Rosa. He knows everything, doesn't he, Rosa? Ty Wuffenden is the man that we'll be cheering on, but obviously any other Brits that are competing uh, Ty Wuffenden, mate. Ty Wuffenden. as well um, will be cheering for. Um, but thank you to uh, Lewis for being in again from the start. Uh, thanks to Needy Peck for turning up at half time. Um, next week's stream, we'll probably look at Thursday next week, I would imagine. Um, nine o'clock maybe ten o'clock um we'll see we'll see um if you are interested and you are available and you do want to come on board on the panel just to have a chat and a laugh and add some comments um you know drop me a message and um and we can sort it out and, and go from there but um come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. <laughs> we're gonna bring the stream to a close with need effects singing come on bomber so it's over to you <laughs> we That's... got Super Scotty Parker. <laughs> we know exactly what we need. Come on, boys. Go on, carry on. I can't remember the rest of the words. He can't remember the rest of the words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That's it from me. Um, good luck with your fantasy teams. Um, next week we'll have a look at the league table as it stands. Um, we'll try and get the top point scorer involved as well, um, so they can. Revel in the glory. Absolutely, that's absolutely true. So yeah, we'll take it from there. So thank you very much once again, and we'll catch you later. Thank you very much. Bye bye, everyone.